give us the 101 in under five minutes of yeah. what MTHFR is and, and why we might consider getting tested for it. Sure, absolutely. So MTHFR stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. And this is a gene that codes for an enzyme of the same name whose job is to activate folate or folic acid to methylfolate. So most people, when they take a multivitamin, it says folic acid in it. It doesn't say methylfolate. Or if they're eating green leafy vegetables, they're getting folate. But your body has to methylate it. Methylation simply means putting a carbon with a couple of hydrogens onto it, and it changes and it activates it. That is needed because you need the activated form of folate in order to take regular B12 cobalamin and activate it to methylcobalamin. Okay, and then methylcobalamin then gives up its carbon, its methyl group, to the substance called homocysteine, which is the substance that goes high in a lot of people. It, high numbers are, are actually associated with increased risk of heart attacks and strokes. And it, it takes down the homocysteine to an amino acid called methionine, which then goes on through this methylation pathway to, for either recycling purposes or for the production of glutathione, which we all know about is the body's most important antioxidant and detoxifier. So basically, when people have deficiencies in their ability to activate folate, their end result may very well be a decreased production of glutathione. But along the way, there's other really important steps as well, from the production of, uh, and the replication of DNA, activation and inactivation of certain toxins. And so that's really what's, what we're doing. So when a person has this MTA, well, we all do have MTHFR as in the gene. What we're really talking about is a mutation in the DNA code. And we're talking about a single DNA switch. So the most common one is called C677T. So at the 677th base pair of this DNA uh, of the DNA for this particular gene, where there should be a C in the DNA code, there is a T. And that is enough of a change. That single change changes around the amino acid structure of the protein, which can significantly decrease the act the ability of the of the enzyme to activate the folate. It's estimated that if you have one mutation, that you may lose about 30% of your activation function. If you have two mutations, then you may actually have somewhere between 60 to 90% reduction. So a double mutation is certainly more significant than a single mutation. But at the end of the day, the idea is if you, if you have this mutation, and therefore you are slowing your ability to make methylfolate, you take methylfolate. And that's what, what most people do. Some people will also use folinic acid, which is another form of activated folate that does not go through MTHFR. It's considered the more versatile. It, your body seems to be able to use it to move it in more ways. But the MTHFR enzyme itself makes methylfolate or technically 5-methylfolate. And so when you see people using 5-MTHF as the form of folate, then that's what, or you know, you'll hear also people use the term Deplin, that's a prescription version of it. Quatrofolate, another version, is like the next generation of it. But these are all activated folate so that the body, if they're not activating the folate, that they're able to still get the activated folate to go on to the next step in the methylation pathway. Okay, I got most of that. <laughs> I didn't follow all of it. And I only got two minutes left before you need to go see a patient. So here's my question for you. How do we go about getting tested for the MTHFR? Where, where and how can we do that? And is it wildly expensive? Right. Okay. Well, you know, fortunately, you know, although it's, it's variable as to how insurances are paying, but every lab, Quest, LabCorp, every hospital does it now because this is part of mainstream. Cardiologists are checking this for, heart, for people with heart attacks. Um, OBGYNs are checking this for people who have miscarriages. So this is mainstream stuff in some of those specialties. It just hasn't made its way down to the pediatric world yet. Okay. okay. So that, that's part of it. But now, the, you know, through the 23andMe test, it could be done. The gene site test, which also looks at medication metabolism, that can do it. So there's a lot of other lab laboratories who are doing it, but you could get, if you, if you do the 23andMe test, for $99 you get that plus a whole, but there's other genes in this methylation pathway as well. Okay, and then if we want to take the methylfolate, is that something we can pick up at CVS, or do we need to order that from very special people? Um, I mean, it, you, you'll find it in a regular health food store. I'm not sure um, if, if they'll have it at a CVS, um, but at any, any major health food store would have it. And it, it comes in a pill form? It's not a shot? No, it's in a capsule form. The methyl B12 that we use as the kind of the, the co-agent along with it is ideally done as a shot, although you could do it sublingually or nasal sprays okay. or the Revita Pops. But as far as the actual methyl folate itself, it's done as a capsule. Okay.